Here is a list of numbers 5, 6, 5, 8, 10, 2, 4, 5 and 3. Nine numbers. Now these numbers are a set of data. Perhaps they're data from somewhere, perhaps it's just a list of numbers. Doesn't really matter either way. There are, however, lots of different ways we could describe the numbers that are here. We could describe this set of data. We might notice that the smallest piece of data in the set is 2. We might notice that the largest piece of data in the set is 10. We might notice that there are three fives in the set of data. We might start to think about the um, number of odd versus the number of even pieces of data. We might start to look at things like times tables, whether there's any sort of pattern to the data, whether there are any common um, links between the numbers in the data. There are lots of different ways that we can describe this set of data. But they're not always necessarily the most useful. The most useful way to describe a set of data would be to come up with a value, a single numerical value to assign to that piece of data. A characteristic value, a number that says, yeah, you know what, all the other numbers in this piece of, in this set of data, everything else we're looking at, they're all a little bit like this particular value, this particular characteristic number. And there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. But the catch-all term, the word that we use for a characteristic value, is to talk about an average. And an average is just that. An average is a characteristic value, a number, usually a single number, occasionally it could be more than one, but a characteristic value that the rest of the data is like. A number or a selection of numbers that describe the rest of the data. So the rest of it is very much like this. There are three averages that we need to be aware of. And the first of those is the mode. And the mode tells us the most common value, the piece of information that turns up most often. So if we look at this set of data here, we could work out the mode. It would be the piece of information that turns up the most commonly. 5, 5 and 5, so the mode in this case is 5, because that turns up three times, whereas the other numbers are unique. Now the second average that we need to know about, the second one we need to be able to find, is the median. Now the median finds the dead centre of the data. It says this is the middle, everything else is on either side of this, roughly equally. Now in order to do that, we have to do one thing to the data first. If we are looking for the dead centre, then we have to make sure that the data is in size order. So to find the median here, what we would need to do is we would need to reorder this list put it from smallest to largest. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to have the 2, and then the 3, and then the 4, and then the 5s, and then the 6, the 8, and the 10. We are now looking for the middle of the data. So we're going to count in from either end until we get to that middle value. So we can count off the 2 and the 10. We can count off the 3 and the 8, we can count off the 4 and the 6, we can count off that pair of 5s, we're left with one value in the middle, and that value there must be our median. So the median here is also 5. The third and final average we need to be aware of is the mean. Now the mean is actually what most people think the word average means. 
when you talk about average, this is what most people think the word meaning. Actually, average is this catch-all term, and there are three different types that we need to be aware of. The mean is just one of those. But what the mean does is it standardizes the data. It says, yeah, okay, some of them are quite small, some of them are a bit bigger, but most of them are around about this mid kind of point. And it sort of balances everything out. It kind of takes a little bit off the big one and adds it onto the small one and balances everything out and says, if we balance it out, what kind of standardized value do we get? What is the number that we get from doing that? And the number that we get is the average in this case, is the mean. And it says that th this number represents the rest of the data. It says it's all a little bit like this standardized value. Now to find the mean, to find this standardized value, we always do exactly the same thing. First thing we do is we look at all the numbers in our list and we total them up. We add up every single thing in the list, total of the data. And then the second thing we do is we count how many pieces of data there are, how many individual pieces of data. And we divide that total by the number of pieces of data. And the number that we get from doing that gives us our mean. So in this case, to find the mean, we're gonna add up five and six and five and eight and 10 and two and four and five and three. We're gonna total them all up and that would give us 48. Then we're gonna count how many pieces of data there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine individual pieces of data. We're gonna do 48 divided by nine. We'll pop that in a calculator and we're gonna get 5.3 as our answer. And the mean of these, this piece, and the mean of this set of data is 5.3. A couple of things we might want to notice about those three averages we've just found. We have just found that for this particular set of data, the mode was 5, the median was also 5, and the mean was 5.3. All fairly consistent. The three averages returning very similar values very similar characteristic values. That won't always be the case. Sometimes one might be wildly different from the other. They each have their advantages, they each have their disadvantages, and sometimes one average might be better than the other. In this case, they're all very similar. Any of those would be good ways to describe the set of data. Looking at the set of data that seems to um, be a fairly even spread from two through 10, yeah, five seems fairly realistic. Three of the pieces of data are five, one of them's a four, one of them's a six, they're close enough, and the other ones aren't too far away either. So in this case, the three characteristic values we've found, the three averages we've found, all seem fairly sensible. A Couple of technical points on those three averages though. They are not without their limitations, and sometimes they can be affected by the pieces of data. Sometimes they're not that useful. If we were to look at this list of data, for example, one, two, three, four, five, perfectly good set of data. What is the mode of that set of data? Well, the mode is the most common value. Well, they all appear exactly once. Each piece of data is unique. So really, there isn't a mode here. It's not possible to find a mode. It is possible to find a median, it is possible to find a mean, but in this case it is not possible to find the mode. Either they are all the mode or none of them are the mode. So in this case there is no mode and that's okay. That's just a limitation of the mode as an average. If we were to now think about this set of data, and try and find the mode. Which of those pieces of data is the most common? Well, actually one turns up twice and two turns up twice. So really, the mode is one and two. We can have more than one mode. We can have no mode, we can have more than one mode. The median will always return one single value. The mean will always return one single value. The mode could be non-existent. It could be one value, it could be two values, it could be three values, it could be more. So 
So in fact, the mode is best used as an average when there are limited options for the data, perhaps a multiple choice system, perhaps something like a yes, no question, because you just want to count the number of yeses and the number of noes, see which one is more common. But when, there are, when there's a limited option, looking for the most common might be a useful thing to do. For any other type of data, it's probably not going to be the most useful. Consider, for example, this set of data. One, 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 and a thousand. Perfectly good set of data. The mode of this set of data is one, because it's the number that turns up the most often. But is one a particularly good way of describing the numbers in that data set? Well, yes, in that three of them are the number one. But that thousand is many times bigger and is not touched on by the mode at all. So the mode particularly good if we have a limited number of options. A note about the median now. So consider this set of data, 5, 7, 1, 2, 10 and 8. Now if we want to find the median, we need to find the dead centre of the data. And the first thing we need to do is we need to put the numbers into size order from smallest to largest. So 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 10. To find the median now, we need to work in towards the middle and find that middle value. So it's not 1 or 10, it's not going to be 2 or 8, and it, oh, now if we cross off the 5 and the 7, we've lost all the pieces of data. So does that mean there isn't a median? Well, no, it can't do, because there has to be a middle value. But the key thing is, the median is finding the dead centre of the data. There is nothing that says it has to be a number that's actually in the list. It just needs to find the middle. So the median is actually going to be in the middle of these two numbers. And what is exactly in the middle of 5 and 7? Well, 6. So the median would be 6. There is always going to be a median. It might not necessarily be a number from the actual list. But if you get down to two numbers in the middle, two pieces of data, the median will be exactly halfway between them because it finds the dead centre of the data. Now the median can be quite useful because the median disregards outliers. It disregards very, very small numbers and very, very large numbers. It takes those into account because by putting them in size order, we're still going to find the dead centre of the data. So the median can be quite useful. It doesn't necessarily take every piece of data into account, but it does deal with the problem of there being very large or very small, uncharacteristically large or small values of data. A cautionary note with the mean then, finally. 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 15,000. Well, we can find the mean of that set of data. We can add them all up, and then we can divide them by how many pieces of data there are. If we were to add those six numbers up, we are going to get 15,011, and then we're going to divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, giving us a mean of 2501.833 dot dot dot, which is the mean. Perfectly good. That's how we work it out. We've added the numbers up. We've divided them by how many there are. We found that standardized value. But the problem is 2501.8, that's not particularly representative of the numbers in that list. It's not like any of them. Five of them are much smaller than that, and one of them is much bigger. And this is the problem with the mean. The mean does not do very well with outliers. Very, very big numbers that are not like the rest of the data, or very, very small numbers that are not like the rest of the data. So all of the averages come with certain considerations that we have to take into account. Sometimes one might be better to use than the others. The mean is generally pr pr pretty good, because it takes into account all of the data, but it does come with this limitation for very uncharacteristic outliers. There's one final way we can describe sets of data, but this way of describing data is not an average. So an average finds a single value that describes the rest of the data. 
a characteristic value. This one is actually an example of what's called a measure of spread. It does not tell us a characteristic value for the data, but it does tell us how spread out the data is. It tells us whether it's very close together and all the numbers are very similar, or whether it's very spread out and all the numbers are very different. It tells us how consistent the data is. The particular measure of spread that we need to know about is the range. And what the range does is it says find the, find the largest value in the data and find the smallest value in the data and then work out the difference between them. So it says find the largest value and then take away the smallest one find the actual difference between the largest and smallest. So in this case, the largest value would be 10, and the smallest value would be 2. So to find our range, we're going to do 10 take away 2. What does that tell us? Well, nothing without context, but put into context, the bigger the range, the more spread out the data is, the smaller the range, the closer together it is, the more consistent it is, in relation to the original set of numbers. 8 is a fairly small number, so those pieces of data are fairly closely linked. If the range was something like 6,000, they will be much more spread out. But as it is, 8, quite consistent, quite close together. And looking at the data in that set just as numbers, we can see that that seems to be the case. So the range, not an average, but a measure of spread. Tell you about consistency how close together or far apart the data is. The final thing it might be helpful to have is some easy, handy way of remembering the three averages and the one measure of spread. The mode, the median, the mean, and the range. Classic question would be to give you a piece of data and say, find the mode, the median, the mean, the range, or some combination of those four things. The hardest thing about those four things is remembering which one is which. That the mode is the most common, the median is the middle value, the mean is adding them all up and dividing them by how many there are, and the range, not an average but a measure of spread, the difference between the largest and the smallest. Well, how about a rhyme? Hey diddle diddle, the median's the middle, you add then divide for the mean, the mode is the one that happens the most, and the range is the difference between. Just to unpick that, hey diddle diddle, the median is the middle, so the middle value when you've put them in order of size from smallest to largest. You add then divide for the mean, add them all up, divide them by how many individual pieces of data are there. The mode is the one that happens the most, it's the most common, and the range is the difference between, the difference between the largest and the smallest to tell you how close together or spread out the data is.